Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 9. In this training module, we're going to take a look at setting up a wideband in our Elite system using our NSP software. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up a wideband controller in our Haltech Elite systems through the NSP software. Now, our wideband controller is going to give us a air fuel reading that's most commonly known if you're talking about a wideband gauge you're usually talking about petrol air fuel reading it can also then give us a reading of units of lambda so it's really going to be depending on what units you want to reference in terms of working with a wideband controller but either way we need to know what our fueling is doing as we're trying to dial in anything within our main ve table or any of our sub correction tables if we have a rich mixture or a lean mixture, we need to know that in order to do the appropriate changes and update things in the appropriate tables. So in order to bring in a wideband reading, we need to know how to configure it, how to set it up. We're gonna have two different choices that we can work with here for wideband controllers. We have a Holtec CAN-based wideband controller, which is going to typically plug into the four pin DTM connector that's found right on your Elite box. You can plug that right in there and that'll allow that to all function. It's pretty much a plug and play, really simplistic wiring. Or if you don't have a CAN based wideband from Haltech, you can go and work with any other wideband type of controller that sends a zero to five volt output from the wideband gauge. We're able to bring that in an in analog input and then set up the calibration scale so that's going to be registering properly. I'm going to show you both methods here in the tutorial. One thing I want to talk about real briefly here, and we'll probably talk about this in some other tutorials, is what's actually going on with a wideband sensor, with an oxygen sensor in general, and what we need to know about it. So when we're talking about an air fuel reading, a lot of people think it's actually how much fuel is being burnt in the exhaust, and it's actually going to be the opposite of what you think. It's a wideband oxygen sensor. Oxygen sensor is the key word here and it's going to be detecting how much oxygen contents in our exhaust stream. So if we're finding we have more oxygen content in our exhaust stream, we have a leaner mixture. If we have less oxygen content in our exhaust stream, we have a richer mixture, meaning we're delivering more fuel or less fuel. So that's one concept people get oftentimes confused when they're talking about an air fuel or a lambda reading, richer, leaner mixtures. It is true that we're putting more fuel into the engine or less fuel into the engine, uh, but it is going to be measuring that oxygen content, not the actual fueling amount that we're actually delivering and burning through the engine. And in a roundabout way, it is because it, it is going to be um, either more or less oxygen content, again, depending on what that what fueling is going to be doing. But I just want to mention that here at the beginning of the tutorial. A lot of people get confused with that, um, and they think it's going to actually measure how much fuel is actually being burnt in the, uh, in the combustion chamber. Okay, so let's move on here. Let's talk about now how we can set up the first option. This is the easiest option. There's really no calibration required. That's gonna be setting up a CAN-based wideband controller from Haltech. So what we need to do here is go over into our main window here, and we're gonna jump up into our sidebar here. We're gonna use our drop-down navigation menu. Jump right here into our sensors section. Now in here, we're gonna find being able to turn on or off the functionality for a sensor. So if we want the sensor to be uh, actually enabled to use it or not, anything in the gray tabs here means it's toggled off. Anything that's highlighted here with the blue tab here means it's checked on, that status is on, we're actually using it for something. We take a look here under the O2 section, we're gonna find that we have all of our options here currently turned off. What we wanna do here is toggle on the wideband option. Now there are these other options here, narrow band one, narrow band two, and O2 heater. The narrowband sensor is going to be the same idea. It's an oxygen sensor, just like our wideband sensors. But the narrowband sensor is going to be only accurate right around stoichiometric or the equivalent of 14.7 to 1 on a petrol air fuel scale or 1.0 lambda. That's our universal gas constant uh, or universal uh, 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 oxygen sensor reading, I should say, across any type of fuel. We'll get into what that means later in the course. but. Just to take away from this, the narrowband sensor is only accurate around that reading of 14.7 to 1 petrol air fuel scale. So it's not really useful for doing tuning at full throttle. Um, in fact, it's not useful at all. We can't really tell accurately what the mixture is going to be. The only way to accurately see what's going on at full throttle conditions is going to be our wideband sensor. That's the option we want to choose. That's all we're going to be setting up right now. I have not used the narrowband sensors at all on any Elite setup I've ever tuned. Um, that doesn't mean that you might run into somebody using narrowband sensors, but I haven't. Widebands are relatively cheap and they are much more useful in terms of the information 
compared to a narrowband sensor. So that's why I'm going to be just toggling this on here and only focusing on setting this up. Now the O2 heater option, just to mention this real quick, this is going to be the heater circuit that has to heat up the narrowband sensor to make it start read accurately. We need that heater circuit to work or other, otherwise it'll get carbon fouled as we're running the engine. Um, so the heater sensor, a heater circuit here is something that, uh, that needs to go with the narrowband sensor, otherwise the sensor can get fouled out. Let's go ahead and turn on the wideband. Now the wideband, I wanna mention here, does has its own heater circuit um, so that's why we don't need to Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.